there guys and welcome back on this week's show part five of our scale model build. When we left the show last week we had finished up with the hood assembly basically the the hood trim the fenders everything the front grille and everything looked great and it all went together really well with minimum problems. Now this week we're going to move forward with the cab area and the cab is not really that difficult. There is a bunch of basic pieces that get cut. But you just want to pay attention to measurements, thicknesses, angles, that sort of thing. And pay attention to how they list them on the plans because they do list them in some cases when they're listed in a very odd way to me because it's not listed in a way where you would cut a seven degree angle and set your fence to seven degree. They would call that an 83 degree angle because they're measuring from a different plane. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's something to pay attention to with the angles and stuff and cut the basic pieces. You will need to photocopy some of the patterns of the side doors and where possible, use your table saw for all the square edges there, guys. Don't try to do it on the scroll saw. It's not going to work for you. Things aren't going to be tight and it's not going to look good. The other thing that's going to be needed is an outline of the door circumference that makes it look like the door is in place. And for that, that is done with a router template. And that's where we're going to focus on now, how to go about making those router templates and how to go about actually routing them out. So I'm going to make all of the basic pieces, get them done, get them ready to go. And then when I come back to see you, I will have those doors ready to go and I will run through the process of how to route those profiles for the door outer rims. Well, here we are starting on the doors. And like I said, we've got some other pieces cut. This here is the firewall. Pay attention to the angles at either side and the angle at the top. That's kind of important. And as well, you know, we've got the cab bottom cut with the angles again, paying attention. And I keep harping on the paying attention. And this is the back of the cab and there is four degree angles on either side here. And if you don't pay attention, you end up with a second piece, just like what I've done here where my angles were cut top and bottom and I got a little overzealous and marked this window in the wrong spot. So really this sits like this on the model. So this is garbage, but that's okay. We've made a new one and we're good to go. Everybody makes mistakes. Now we're at the stage that we're going to be making these doors. And for this, we're going to make a couple of templates. One template will be to mark this particular window opening here and this particular cut here. There's really not much of a way to cut this on a table saw safely. You're better off just to do it with uh, a scroll saw or even a little hand saw, coping saw, whatever, and then sand it up to the rest of the pieces by hand. But that's just a simple template. The template that we need to make, and we have such a large piece here for, is to route this kerf for our cab door. And it's a little confusing. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. But what you're going to be using for this is a um, a bushing for your router. So if this is your router base, you have a bushing that inserts into your router that sticks out through the bottom just like that. And your router bit will stick through here and will extend beyond this particular little bushing part. Now, I'm going to be using a 1 16th inch diameter bit to do this particular routing. So for that, we want a template. Now, I don't want to go on the outside of the template. I want to go on the inside to give me a little more control. So what you need to figure out is the measurement now between the center of your bit and the outer edge of your bushings little nib that catches on the template's edge. And this dimension, let's just say it's 1 8. I'm just making up a measurement here. Yours might be different. Mine might be different. I haven't measured it yet. So one eighth difference there. Well, that means that your template has to be cut one eighth of an inch larger all the way around 
than what your bushing is for your router. And give yourself plenty of extra on the sides, guys, and that will allow you plenty of router support. I have actually cut myself kind of short here on this edge, and when I go to route, I will be using an extra piece of quarter inch MDF to support it as the router comes around this edge, because you don't want it tipping and then gouging your nice clean lines. Also, start outside of the template. Don't cut all this off up here. Leave it intact and extend the lines of your template so that they're beyond that, so you have a starting point. You're not trying to start right on the mark. You're starting back here somewhere and then routing into it and following carefully around that template. So I'm going to measure up my router bushing. I'm going to get that measurement and make this cut here, whatever this is, bigger. So we're going to mark it all out, cut it, and then we're going to place it down in order to route our groove. And I'll get back to you to show you how to do that part. Well, we have the template made for the window section and this front cutout, and this is our stock for it. You can see some scribbled out areas here. That's because there's flaws on the opposite side of the board, and I don't want them to show in the model. So the first thing that you want to do is to line up your template, and we just want to put some reference marks. Nothing serious just the edges here so that we know where we want to line things up. We're not going to bother marking the rest of it. You know, we can do that after. As well, you want to flip it over now because you want to right and left door and line it up and do those same reference marks here. Now, once we get those done, we can put our router template in place to these reference marks. Now, Keep the pieces as big as possible. As I've told you, this gives us plenty of working room. We're not working with smaller pieces and we can cut them off afterwards. So now that we've got our rough pieces marked, mark which door is which door. In this case, this will be the driver's door and this here will be the passenger's door. And that's just so that we can keep them straight while we're working on them for no other reason than that. Now we need to get our template for the routing. Now what I've done is taken those reference lines here and transfer them onto the edge of the stock using a square. And I have the router template here. And surprisingly enough, when I measured out my uh, bushing for the router, it turns out that it was an eighth of an inch. So I made this hole an eighth of an inch larger, and all we're going to do is paying attention to which side is drivers or passengers because that will reverse this um, template. I've transferred the edges of everything to the edges or the edge marks here of the doors to the edges here of our template. We're going to line up those marks, line up this edge, and we're going to use some double face tape here and here to hold it all in place. Well, now it's time to do the routing, and I have this piece of three-quarter MDF set up here. I have my original piece shimmed up so that it's level. Remember that router support down here that I talked about, where I cut it a little close here? Now it's time to do the routing, and I'm just going to put the router in here in the waste area, and very carefully I'm going to follow along in my template, carefully, slowly, until I get back into the waste area again. Um, clamp down as much as you can so that your hands are free and able to concentrate on your work. And other than that, that's all there is to it. So let's route this, uh, this door profile. You can see here that we're just carefully running the router around the outside of the template using the bushing as our guide. Uh, you can also see here that I've placed some packing tape to try to hold the pieces together. Now, really, at the end of this route, it, it didn't hold. It ended up letting go, and I was lucky enough that it didn't screw up my, my routing because I was able to control it through to the end. But that's something that you want to keep in mind to keep everything well secured and well clamped down. And that there is the first of our routes done. 
These can be a bit of a bear to separate. Just go gentle with a one inch putty knife there underneath and you can just gently pry it and it will eventually just pop. Now, a couple piece of it, piece of it, pieces of advice here is when you're applying your double-sided tape here, you want to make sure that you get it, uh, give it the chance to adhere. And for that, clamp it up for a couple minutes, guys. Don't just push it in place with your hand pressure. It's not enough. It won't hold. You really want to get a clamp on, in, on there and hold it together, and you'll get that really good adhesion. Also, during the router, you may or the routing, you may have noticed that things slipped out on me. I tried to use a little bit of packing tape to hold it in place because I'm in a tight area for clamping. It didn't work, but I was able to hold it down with the palms of my hands and still manipulate the router. We've got a nice clean route, and you just want to remember now that when you go to do the other side, you need to reverse this template and do the same process, route it out, tape it down, etc., etc. And then once that is done, the routing is finished and you can start breathing again because it is a rather hectic purpose or a, a, a process. It really drives you crazy. You're always afraid you're gonna mess it up. But then from there, just line up your template for the window openings and such, trace it out, Remembering to cut your angles here at the front and back. The plan doesn't show any angles, but there has to be your four degree angle there as well uh, in order to have it sit flush with that firewall and the back of the cab. So we'll do all this, cut this with the scroll saw, cut this, finish up your routing, and then we'll come back and show you the pieces that we've got done for the door and how everything all fits together. And then we can move on. And you can see there that we have a dry fit of the cab. And um, you may or may not notice I have this one side of the door and this side of the door just a little bit proud of this firewall because we're going to need to shape that. And I really didn't want it to be lower by accident. Now, if you guys are not proficient in using router templates to route out these, these door markings, by all means, what I would suggest, and I've done it in the past, is make several extras and route several of them or practice on some MDF until you get the hang of exactly how it feels and what to expect. You can get some really great results by using a template and that router bushing to uh, really get a nice, crisp, clean line. I'm gonna sand all of these up and then once we get them sanded up, we're gonna glue this assembly together and you know, put it aside and let it dry because there's some more parts that need to be made for the inside of this and, of course, the roof. Well, if you remember, I had mentioned a while back that after looking deeper into the plans, I thought that maybe these gas filler caps or the fuel filler caps um, would be in the way. And sure enough, they are. It keeps the body tilted up. Um, it's my own fault, no big deal, but it's all part of the problem solving of making these models. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna take a flush cut saw, I'm gonna trim these off, I'm gonna sand them flush so that it's, you know, nice and filled, and then I'm just gonna take the part that I cut off, shift it over, and surface glue it onto the side of the tank just above the step like it should have been in the first place if I was paying attention. But you can see it's coming along nicely. And while I'm talking about the cab, I've gone ahead and made things like the seats. And the seats are nothing special. It's just a scrolled out piece of uh, wood out of one inch thick stock. And they will just sit inside the cab like that. There's two of them. Really nothing special about that particular piece. And there will be some other pieces that I'm gonna summarize after I make them um, because there's really nothing much to tell as far as how to make them. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Well, you can see by the picture that we've got quite a few pieces made here and installed on the build. We've got the back fenders or the back section of the front fenders, if that makes sense. We've got the air filters installed, we've got the seats put in, um, and we've also corrected that little mistake with the filler caps for the fuel tanks. No big deal, this stuff happens in these builds. Don't worry about it. At least if you've watched this before building yours, maybe you can make the correction. 
Those parts are really nothing special, guys. It's nothing more than transferring patterns, making some templates. Nothing different than what I've shown you. And now, we act, we've got a kind of a convertible here, and we need to get that roof on. And that's going to be the next piece that we need. Now, that piece has angles on the side. It has a taper to the front. It's a little bit awkward. And just like before, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a larger piece of stock. In order to make the roof for the cab, it's a little bit of a funky piece. It's got some strange angles here. These are our four degree angles. They've listed them as 86. Um, it's got an end thickness on this side as it looks like 5 16 This side here is not listed, but yet I've measured it and it looks to be about 1 8 of an inch. And then there's a taper that runs all the way down from your 5 16 down to your 1 8 Now it shows a hard line here, but yet it gives no measurement for that. So I'm just going to eyeball it. You've also got this curve to the front. Now, like I said, you want to give yourself some extra material. So I have a piece of the poplar here that's actually about four inches longer than what I want. And I've marked the back end of my roof for the cab. I've marked where I think this hard line taper should be. And I've also marked my final thickness on the edge of the board. And all I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take this over to the belt sander, making sure that my table is square to the belt. And I'm going to carefully sand this down and get that taper and leaving lots of room at the back end of the piece to keep my fingers away from the belt. So we're going to sand this up, get that taper in place, and then we'll be able to cut it to length and get our angles cut in, into this particular uh, section of the build. You want to start sanding your taper, just making sure that your stock is square to your table and just check it periodically with your reference lines to make sure that you are sanding it square. And of course you can see here that my fingers are far from the belt and that's due to the extra stock that I've left there to give me the safety factor of a little bit of distance from that sanding belt. So sand up to your lines and get your taper in place. Once you've done that of course you can head over to the table saw and cut the roof of your cab till its final length front to back. And then the next step would be to cut your four degree angle on the one side, but because you need to keep that flat surface on the table saw, you'll have to put your fence on the opposite side of your blade to cut the taper on the driver's side for your final piece to be finished. Well, you've got the angles on the side cut and you've got it cut to its length and it's looking pretty good, but we still have this front contour to put on. And there's many ways you can go about it. You can just trace the pattern onto it. You can glue your pattern onto your piece. Just remember that you need that flat surface to sit on the scroll saw or the sander if you choose just to sand up to the line. For me, I'm going to make a template because that's the way I do it. And I would suggest that you do the same. That gives you the option of being able to adjust that front contour and see it in pencil first before you ever do any cutting. So if you're not happy with the template and you're not happy with the lines that that template produces on your uh, good piece, then you're sure as heck not going to be happy with the final product. So a template does more than just give you the ability to mark easily. It gives you a preview of what you're in for when you actually cut this thing. So make a template or whatever method you want to do and do the front contour and the 1 8 round over on the front side and back edges of the roof of your cab. Well, if you've taken your time and you've done things properly, um, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now this is not glued into place and we're not going to glue it in place because there's still some other pieces that need to be made um, which we don't need a video of. Things like the dashboard and that front top panel of the dash. There's an upright that goes in the windshield part, that sort of thing. There's a sun visor that goes on there which is nothing more than putting a template onto your stock and cutting it and sanding up to the line. That is not uh, really need it for me to show you for this build. What we're going to make next for the, for the build though, once we finish with the dashboard and all that, is the steering wheel. 
And as I've said earlier in the build, I don't buy any uh, pre-made parts. I make all my own. And to be completely honest, the steering wheel are the things that I hate them. I hate making them. They're horrible. But I'm going to show you my method. And it all starts off with the thickness of stock that you want your steering wheel made out of. We're going to start off making the steering wheel by getting some scrap stock. And in this case, we're using some scrap walnut. It's one quarter of an inch thick. And uh, we just scaled that off the drawings on the plans. The next thing that we've done is we've marked a center mark on this piece of walnut. This is an inch and a half wide piece. And we've set a compass to mimic the outer diameter of our steering wheel. And again, all we did was we just lined it up on the prints and adjusted our compass until it lined up with the marks on our prints. Now we're going to draw out four of these because inevitably one of these gets ruined, if not more. It's just the nature of the beast with the simple method that we use to make these. Inevitably, one or two of them get broken. And it's nothing to get frustrated over, but it's one of the reasons I hate making steering wheels. So I'm going to draw out these four circles, and then once we get the four circles done, we're going to head over to the drill press. Well, scaling off our drawing, we have discovered that the center hub, or the opening in the middle of our steering wheels, is 15 sixteenths of an inch. So I've installed a 15 sixteenths inch Forstner bit and we're going to drill a through hole in our blanks here. Um, I'm going to use the fence for support because it is a smaller piece and we're going to drill a 15 sixteenths through hole and that will represent the opening in our steering wheel. Well, now that you've got those holes drilled, you now end up with three oopses and one good steering wheel. Uh, hopefully you won't need the oopses, but we're going to take these over to the scroll saw now. And that original outer diameter that you drew, you want to use the scroll saw to cut that diameter out. But cut about a sixteenth outside of the line. Well, you guys are going to laugh at the primitive nature which I use to shape these steering wheels. But this is how I've always done it, and it's really not anything magical. I've just taken a scrap piece of poplar, and I've turned it here, set it up between centers, and I've turned it to a taper, and the end of the taper coincides with the center diameter of the hole that we drill, which is 15 sixteenths. And there's a little shoulder there for registration on this side of the steering wheel so we know that it's sitting flush. And basically, the, the extremely complicated process here is that I turn the lathe on and I use sandpaper to round the outer edges to give me the outer profile of our steering wheel. Now, at first, I keep an eye on the line that we drew on there, and I sand up to that line to get it nice and round, and then I'll move on to the sandpaper. Now, I have used lathe chisels to do this, and you could do that as well. You just risk breaking it more than what you would with sandpaper. So I'm going to suggest that if you're new to it and new to doing this, you may not want to use the uh, chisel method. So turn the lathe on and sand around the outside diameter, getting it down to the size, and then shape it to the profile you want. And truth be told, I got lucky on that one and was able to complete the outer uh, profile on this steering wheel with just one of the blanks. That's actually pretty rare for me. Normally I break a couple before I ever get this thing finished. And there's still plenty of time to break it, don't get me wrong. 
Um, breaking it is just part of the assembly, guys. It's just part of doing the model, and it's just the way it works. It's no big deal, and if you should break one, don't get upset about it. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Make another one and enjoy the process of learning it. So now, we need to shape the inside of this steering wheel as well, and we need to round it like the outside. Now, there's all kinds of machine machinery that you can use to shape this inside, and I'm going to tell you right now, they're all dangerous. Don't do it. Don't do it. You'll lose a finger. It's not worth it. Get yourself some sandpaper and sit there in your comfortable chair in your shop and sand the whole inside of this profile and round it over. It doesn't have to be super duper round or super duper perfect. It's a steering wheel inside a model for crying out loud. So go ahead, sand this up and round it all off. And then once we get that done, we're going to work on the hub of the steering wheel. Well, now that we have the outside of our steering wheel done, we want to work on this hub. So all I've done is I photocopied the pattern here off of our plans, and I'm going to attach this to some stock, probably some 3 16 of an inch stock in a contrasting color. And we're going to cut the profile of this inside uh, hub. Now, you want to cut the outside a little bigger, so cut it just outside of the lines, and then what we're going to do is we're going to sand up to those lines ever so carefully so that we can glue it on the inside of our steering wheel. Now, don't worry about this center part because we're going to put an overlay on top of this afterwards. So for now, just cut around the outside of these pieces here, and then we'll glue it into our steering wheel piece that we just made a little while ago. Now, if you measure carefully and if you cut carefully and sand lightly, you will end up with something that fits in your steering wheel just like that. And you can see there now we have our hub of our steering wheel in place. And all that's left to do is measure the diameter across this center hub here. And that will be the size of the dowel. We're going to round it off to make it a little more um, kind of pleasing to the eye and then we're going to glue it in place and then a 3 16 inch dowel here in the middle will allow us to mount it to our dashboard um, which we placed inside the cab and there you can see that we have the steering wheel mounted and it wasn't really that hard hopefully you guys uh, were able to do that with little to no problem now, this isn't the only method to make the steering wheel. It's just the, the, the one that I found that is the least painful, you know, the one to get it over with because I hate making steering wheels. But maybe try your own method, see how you make out. Guys, that is all the time we have for this week. We've made a heck of a lot of progress with that, pretty much the entire cab being finished. And now when we come back next week, we're going to move on to the area like the sleeper and that sort of thing and possibly get into some more of the details of the build. Those pieces that I said would probably break off if you put them on too early. Well, with that being said, guys, that's it for this week's show. I want to thank you for joining me again this week. And I hope that you are going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.